Praise the Lord, everybody. What an another amazing opportunity this is uh, to be here with you tonight and to speak the word of God into your heart and into your spirit. Listen, do me a favor. Make sure you tag, text, tweet, inbox, call, yell down the hallway, whatever you have to do, and tell somebody that they need to be in Bible study tonight. This night, I believe, is going to strengthen your heart, stretch your faith, and challenge you to go and do things that you never imagined uh, you would be able to do because of the power of the Word of God. Let's go into the Word of God tonight and be blessed. You are having an amazing and amazing day uh, this day. I hope you are visualizing um, even clearly, even more clearer, um, the future that you desire. Um, make sure you are sharing this. Make sure you're inviting as many people as possible. And in today's session, I want to talk about don't waste a move. Even more than that, I think it's a mandate um, from me to you to tell you do not waste a move. As we are embarking upon moving toward a new year, a new season, a new chapter, a new juncture, um, even new relationships for people, it is very, very vital that one of your personal declarations now is saying, I, I can't afford to waste a move. Every move has got to count for me. There is an overwhelming deficit between the people who move strategically versus the people who move sporadically. And generally, the people who are moving sporadically, they're generally promoted by some kind of scare or unexpected or unpredicted deviation from their normalcy. And so I want you to commit yourself to being a very strategic mover as opposed to sporadically moving. Moving because of deviations from normalcy, but I want you to have the foresight, the insight, uh, to be able to make the necessary moves that are gonna better uh, position your tomorrow than it is today. Now, the trouble is that the inclination for most people is to deal with what's in front of them, what's due today, what has to be done now, what needs the immediate attention now, what needs to be addressed now, and sometimes there are going to be moments in your life where the best course of action is that here and now type of approach. But if you find yourself going through your life, your days, your weeks, always focus only on what needs to be done immediately, it means that you're not properly cultivating the kind of discipline that is mandatory for successfully prioritizing your life. Ladies and gentlemen, you do yourself a grave disservice by not allowing your plans projections, pursuits, partners, and points of focus to be more futuristic. Now, I'll give you that again. You are doing yourself a grave disservice by not allowing your plans, your projections, your pursuits, your partners, and points of focus to be more futuristic. There has to be a heightened level of intensity for developing entrance strategies into the version of your future that you prefer. And equally as important, you must develop exit strategies from the life you simply just put up with. Now that is critical because in, in my book, um, I write about how one of the keys to success is knowing how to make an entrance and knowing how to make an exit. And somehow, whenever you become convinced that you are optionless, is perhaps one of the most deflating impacts on your emotional state that can ever happen to you. The only way to combat this, hear this really well, is to always think long term. Now, if you if you if you made up your mind, I'm going to move very strategically. Then one of the keys is that you have to commit to thinking long term. This, however, poses a question with a great deal of people, majority of people, because most people are too short-sighted to think long-term. They only see the here and now. What's in front of me? What's due? What's the deadline? What's the due date? And consequently, their life never goes anywhere promising, all because they have allowed themselves to be captivated by the immediate 
as opposed to being a person who's thinking long term? Why is it so important um, that I don't waste a move in the season of my life? Number one, time is too short to be random. I want that to sink in. Time is way too short, precious, and valuable for you to be thinking random. You must execute deliberately. Now, when we talk about randomness, which a lot of people have this, they seem to be married to the concept of doing things very randomly and sporadically. Um, it means things without method or conscious intention. Deliberately deals with a premeditated posture. When I am, again, making the necessary moves in my life and recognize that time is too short to be random and that I must by all means execute very deliberately. It means everything I do from this point on is premeditated. I'm no longer doing things on the whim. I'm no longer allowing circumstances to dictate my response. I'm no longer allowing situations to make me um, shun um, necessary deliberation periods, and um, and then I just make popcorn judgments. No, the reality is that everything you do starting this day has to be premeditated. Before you commit your time to anyone, you have to consider and calculate ahead of time the benefit, watch this, you will gain from entertaining them. I've learned that. Um, if I have you scheduled for lunch, it's because I've already calculated the benefit that if I spend an hour and a half with lunch from them, they're going to teach me some insights, some nuggets, some concepts that are going to expand my brand, expose me to something more, expose me to something new. And the problem is part of your problem um, has been you have been entertaining too randomly and you've not given the consideration to the benefit gained or that should be gained from any interaction or any entertainment you are having between you and other people. Again, time is too short to be random. I want that to resonate in your head, in your mind and your spirit. You must execute deliberately. Everything I do, it is absolutely deliberate. I know when I'm doing it, I know when I'm stopping. I know what the next move is going to be because again, the challenge right now is um, moving strategically versus sporadically. And so you got to ask yourself, whenever you're committing your time to anyone, consider and calculate ahead of time the benefit you will gain uh, from that exchange. How would this exchange elevate me? This is what you should be asking yourself. Before I accept this, how would this exchange elevate me? Will my self-awareness become heightened? Will my self-esteem be enhanced? How, how will me entertaining you educate me? Will you stimulate my need and desire for new knowledge? Will your concepts and conversations about life challenge me to challenge me to do and be more committed to my life, myself, my dreams, my goals, my ambitions? Or will it cause me to become content being casual about the direction and the outcome of my life. This is all a part of recognizing that time is too short to be random, right? I, I just can't connect for entertainment purposes solely, right? I'm not saying that you got to be a dud and a dead head. Yeah, I want you to do things that are going to entertain you and provide some sort of leisure and casual um, enjoyment. But the reality of it is that eight, the other 85, 90% of your time has to be deliberately calculated and you must give great consideration and you must ponder these questions. How, if I meet with him, is this going to elevate me? Is it going to give me a heightened awareness of my, um, myself? Will my self-esteem be enhanced, right? Because you randomly get inspired when you need to have regimens, routines, and relationships in place that restrict you from being reckless about the time that you have allotted, right? Let me give you that again. You randomly get inspired, meaning whenever you have no 
regiment, whenever you have no routine, whenever you don't have the proper relationships in place to restrict you from being so reckless with your time, um, then you just randomly get inspired. Every now and then something may hit you as opposed to developing these routines, these um, regiments and relationships in your life that are there to nurture you, that are there to keep you on task, that are there to provide accountability to you so you don't just randomly zone in and out. Um, you're randomly there. You're randomly not. You're randomly invested and then sometimes you're not. But you have to have the right routines, the right regiments, and the right relationships in place to safeguard you from operating um, sporadically and randomly as opposed to living your life very strategically. Everything I do has a premeditated outcome, right? So if you're going to go into this next chapter of your life, you can ill afford to go into it randomly. You have to intentionally, and I want you to hear this, you must intentionally surround yourself with progressive-minded individuals whose work ethic and their commitment to their ideal life influences you in and is non-tolerant of your state of inactivity. Let me say that again. You got to. Um, out, of, out of all the things you're bringing around your life, you have to intentionally surround yourself with people who are progressive-minded, whose work ethic and their commitment to their ideal life influences you. And these are generally people who are not going to be tolerant to your state of inactivity, right? That's, that's kind of me. If you're going to be around me, I can't just call you and say, hey, what's up? Oh, nothing. What you into? Nothing much. What you doing? Nothing. Then I now know that I have to now um, reconfigure how I categorize you in terms of my relationship. This is somebody I need to talk to in my leisure time, whatever time I allot for leisure to refresh, um, to reset my mind so that I can have the necessary energy and enthusiasm um, to accomplish those things I set out. But a progressive minded person, whenever you call them, hey, what you got? Or, hey, I'm doing this. I have this scheduled at two. I'm doing this at five o'clock. I have to make this meeting at 830. So what's up? Right. Here's how much time I have to talk to you right now. And we'll pick this up in the day because you have you must intentionally surround yourself with progressive minded people whose work ethic and commitment to their ideal life influences you because life is way too short. Hear me when I tell you to simply spend it reacting, but you must take a proactive stance and distance and dismiss yourself from anyone who gets disgruntled with you because your desire to deliberately pursue a life that is far bigger than you want, than you have now frustrates them, right? You, you got to deliberately pursue a life that is far bigger than the one that others have drawn up for you. In other words, you, the, the picture of how life should be that you've gained from people who are not nearly living up to um, their potential, who are not remotely um, generating the kind of results out of their life that they could be. And so you cannot spend your life simply reacting, but you must take a proactive stance and dismiss yourself from anybody who gets disgruntled with you because you, you, you desire to deliberately pursue the life you want. They're not going to be beneficial in the long run. Sometimes you got to save yourself the trouble of long goodbyes and say, you know what? I think we've reached a juncture. Uh, let's part as friends. Um, but the people that I need around me now are those who have drive, those who have a passion that is undaunted, those who have, those are who are in pursuit for something far greater uh, than, the, than the one that their mother drew out for them or their father or their family members have, have told them, this is the, as far as you can go and this is all that's going to be. The truth of the matter is, and I want you to get this, and I want you to rehearse this and ponder this in your mind. We're talking about not wasting a move, right? Time is too short to be so random. You must execute deliberately. You must bring, you must have regimens, routines, and relationships in place that restrict you from being reckless with your time. You have to have people who actively hold you accountable um, for everything you do or not do relative to the time you have been allotted. 
Hear this and, and keep this in your mind. My ideas are bigger than my issues. Now, the reason I have to say that is because so many people use their issues as good enough excuse to abandon their personal agendas. And they use it as a good enough reason to call off uh, their pursuit for better life, better salaries, better opportunities for themselves. When the reality of it is you have to say every single day, my ideas are bigger than my issues. My concepts about life are bigger than my current reality, right? Um, my dreams are bigger than my current budget. I want you to rehearse this. I want you to say this until it resonates in your heart and your spirit, until it becomes a part of your internal dialogue. You got to get up. I say it all the time. My, my ideas are bigger than my issues. No concepts. My concepts about life are bigger than my current reality. My dreams are bigger than my current budget, right? So I can ill afford to be in a place of inactivity or become idle. I have to make moves. I have to make moves that make sense, though. I have to make moves that have been deliberated over, but not deliberated to the point that I don't move. Because a lot of people have plans, but they stay in a neutral posture. They never push into drive because they're just simply deliberating, deliberating, and deliberating. Now, if you're going to make significant moves in your life, and again, we're talking about being strategic versus being sporadic, which means I have to have a premeditated posture that I am delivering. When it shocks everybody, I say, oh my God, I can't believe you did that. In your mind, you're saying, I can, because I, I was deliberate about my moves. I was deliberate about my work ethic. I was deliberate about the people I was surrounding myself with. I was deliberate about being focused and my priorities. And so it's a result of my deliberate planning. Now, if you're going to be, if you're going to cover great ground and extraordinary territory and make the moves that need to be made to see more out of your life, one of the things that has to happen is there must be an unapologetic urgency within you that is not swayed nor suppressed. Hear this by others' lack of it. Now, if you get that, it's going to change your perspective. There must be an unapologetic urgency within you that is not swayed or suppressed by other people's lack of it. People are like, man, you're going too fast. Slow down some. Slow down. Or, or maybe you ought to take a break. Well, again, you know the trajectory of your life. You have a premeditated plan. You have already postured yourself for the journey. And so sometimes people who don't have the same degree of urgency that you have are going to try to sway you to take it down a notch. Well, in reality, I should be probably kicking it up a notch. My grandfather would say, he would say, son, there'll be plenty of time to sleep when you die. While you're here, you better act urgently about your life, your future, your plans. What you're doing now should be really focused on the next half of your life or the next phase of your life. Um, you should be focused on retirement. Now, how much is it going to take for you to retire comfortably? Three million, eight million, whatever the number is, that, that's what um, my objectives are focused on now. What I am premeditated on now is to set up how I'm going to be provided for, taken care of in the next phase of the next chapter of my life. Hear me, the more progressive you are with your time, the more prone you are to postpone and prolong things that are necessary to see your potential fully realized. Let me give you that again. The more passive you are with your time, you, you know, what you're doing today, nothing much. Because if you saw time like money, I think you would treat it differently. Have you ever heard anybody say, well, how did you spend your weekend? How did you, what did you, how did you spend your, your Friday? Not realizing that time is like money. When you spend it, it's exhausted. Um, but the reality of it is time is the only commodity you can't get more of. You can't trade anything to get more days or get more time. What you have is what you have. And if you're going to make the right moves in your life to better position your family, to elevate the quality of living for you, your family, then you must understand that the more passive you are with your time, the more prone you are to postpone and prolong things that are necessary to see your potential fully realized. 
I like this saying that life is way too short to live the same day twice. Recycling experiences plus relaxed efforts plus ridiculous excuses is the formula for a regretful existence. I'll give you that again. You, you got to hear what I'm saying to you. Life is too short to live the same day twice, right? I don't want to just necessarily do what I did yesterday. It becomes boring, monotonous. I mean, I'm not talking about the principles you have in place for operating your life. But I mean, just to do the same thing day in, day out is a boring, monotonous thing. And so whenever you keep recycling experiences and uh, couple that with your relaxed efforts and with your ridiculous excuses, it's the formula for a regretful existence. Spontaneity, ladies and gentlemen, is valuable and sometimes necessary, but the consequences would be disastrous if most of our lives' direction were left up to happenstance. There are people who say to me whenever I try to instill into them, hey, you got to be more strategic about how you're moving. Again, you, you got to have a deliberate approach to life. Um, you have to have a premeditated posture. You must surround yourself with people who are progressive in their mind. You must have regiments. You must have relationships in place um, that safeguard the unnecessary wasting of your time. Well, does that mean I have to be so rigid that there's no room for spontaneity in my life? Absolutely not. Uh, the truth is I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a spontaneous person, right? But again, everything I do is premeditated. So I've allotted um, some time for spontaneity, right? Life is a little dull if you just do the same things all the time, right? So there is a place for spontaneity. So I don't want you to think that having a successful life, um, doing extraordinary things is just a boring, monotonous cycle. It's really not. Spontaneity is valuable. It's necessary, but the consequences would be horrific if most of our lives direction were simply left up to chance or happenstance. We live with this fictitious belief that somehow a better future is just going to happen. Let me be the person to tell you that a better life doesn't just happen. You don't just wake up and life say, and, and say ta-da and now you have a better life. That is erroneous. Um, it's a result of relentless effort. It's the, it's the a uh, result of having a resolve in your mind, your heart and your spirit that says no matter how hard I get knocked down, no matter how many times people try to deny me, I am still going to rigorously pursue um, the future that I prefer, right? And so um, you have to kind of get up every day. Again, we're dismantling the fact that you can just be random with your time, random with your involvement, and simply be spontaneous and get the future that you desire and the one that you think you deserve. Why is such a thoughtless mindset so pervasive? Why do people think that I can do nothing and get everything, right? The life that you desire is going to require everything you got. And I tell people all the time that you have enough of what it takes to get everything you want out of life. It's a matter of prioritizing. It's a matter, again, of being more progressive and less passive. It's a matter of prioritizing your life in the order of importance, in the order of desired outcome. I'm not prioritizing just my life. I'm not planning my life week a week at a time. You got to be planning in decades now, right? You got to start planning decades, 10 years. That that should be the goal for your plan. You know, I got a, I got a short-term goal, which is, you know, that's usually encompasses the next three to six months. And then you start progressing and realize I had better start thinking about the next 10 years. You know, I'm 20 now. What I do with my 20s is going to re be reflective in my 30s. What I'm doing in my 30s is going to be reflective in my 40s and 40s and 50s and so on. And so if you have that kind of concept in your mind, then it's going to safeguard you from veering too far off course and staying goal oriented. Um, and so I don't know why people have this mindset. It does not correspond with reality. No one ever just drifts into better circumstances. People who sit passively 
find themselves drifting into more dangerous circumstances. They find themselves simply meandering through life, not realizing that things don't get better. They actually get worse. By doing nothing, you actually put yourself in a worse position. And so you had better get up every day and have some initiative, have some grind, have some drive. Again, take my advice. Put yourself in the midst of progressive people, people who get up every day hungry. You know, I, I, I'm like that, right? Sometimes I get up, it's, you know, three in the morning, four in the morning, five in the morning, and I'm mad at the sun. Like, come on, hurry up and come up so I can get to it, right? Hurry up. I got, I got, I got things to do. I've got money to, to make. I've got properties to secure. And when you have your own internal drive, the alarm clock doesn't get me up. My drive pushes me to get up every single day and be as diligent and dedicated to what I desire than I've ever been before in my life. It is more detrimental than most realize when you, when you, when you think that you can be inactive and have an ideal life that is never going to work. I want you to push that as far out of your mind as you can. You can never have your ideal life from an idle position, right? And so it's more detrimental than most people realize who don't project into their future. They don't set goals. They fail to anticipate opportunities and obstacles, and they neglect to design today's strategy based on tomorrow's anticipated outcome. Hear this, ladies and gentlemen, your time is limited, so stop wasting it by not valuing enough to get everything out of it. Everything that today has for me, I intend to get it before the sun goes down. Because let me tell you, enveloped in 20, every 24-hour cycle, there are some things that God has strategically placed within every 24 hours of your life. And you have to have the mentality that says, I'm not going to leave anything on the table. Can you imagine when you sit so idle and you have no direction, you have no drive and you're not diligent about anything in life that you can wake up six o'clock in the morning, go to bed at 10 o'clock and you've left 30 things on the table that God had allowed for you to take advantage of. But you're so busy wasting moves. I mean, you're moving, but... There's no manifestation. It's like a man on a treadmill. You can run and run, but never go anywhere, right? And so you don't want your life to just be a monotonous cycle of motion. You want it to be a cycle that produces manifestation. You want it to be a cycle that produces multiplication in every arena of your life. Today, I want to tell you, don't waste another move, right? Be more deliberate, be more strategic, stop being so random, stop being so reckless with your time and understand all you have is, is now. But you got enough now to make the life that you want. Well, I don't want to assume that every one of you who are watching me on this day um, is saved or have a relationship with Jesus Christ or even has a church home. Um, I, I don't want to make that assumption. I, I want to know for sure. And I want you to know for sure that if Jesus Christ was to come back now, that you would absolutely go back with him. And if you're not sure, my brother, my sister, this is the day um, to get sure. All you have to do is receive Jesus Christ in your heart. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you are from that moment. You are saved from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. And if you're watching me and you said, I am one of the ones, I am submitting to the leading of the Holy Spirit, I'm submitting my life to him. There's an email address right here at the bottom of your screen. I have staff on standby right now that are waiting to help pray you through and help further facilitate the decision that you have made this day for Jesus Christ. The angels in heaven are rejoicing. And so am I because now you are a part of the kingdom of God. Well, it's time to bless the Lord all over the world. That's right, you are part of our global worship experience as we worship the Lord in our giving. Giving is an act of worship as we bring unto him a portion of those things that God has so graciously gifted us and graced us to have. We honor him when we do so. 
First of all, as you prepare the Lord's tithe, he told us that we are to bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there might be meat in the house of God. When he's talking about meat, he's not talking about steak and salami. He's talking about fresh revelation. That every time you would tune in, every time you would be a part of this service, that you would hear and be the recipient of fresh revelation. Tithing keeps the heavens open over your lives where God continually begins to outpour favor and blessings on your life. As you are preparing your offering this day, I want to challenge as many of you that will stand with me, those who can do it, those who feel the leading of the Holy Spirit to do it. I want you to get a $33 seed offering today. I just sense in my heart that it's going to trigger what I see is like an avalanche effect that when the seed hits the ground, blessing upon blessing upon blessing are getting ready to be released and revealed in your life. Not just monetarily, but answers you've been needing, clarity you've been needing, directions you've been waiting on calls you've been waiting to get back. I believe that this seed is a trigger seed. It's going to trigger those things that you've been needing and that you've been wanting from God. The giving means are right here at the bottom of the screen. Find the one that's most convenient and take advantage of it. If you don't want to give uh, electronically, make sure you take advantage of being able to mail your seeding. That's right. There's a, e a mail address, mailing address right here at the bottom of your screen. Get a stamp, an envelope, a money order, cashier's check. Send the seed in. We're going to pray over it and pronounce God's blessing over your life. You're in a season of divine overflow and abundance. Keep on giving. God's not through giving back to you yet. Well, I hope that you have been tremendously blessed on this night. I believe that uh, tonight is going to be a night that causes you to think and rehearse and replay those things uh, that you have been taught on this night. And as you meditate on them, God's going to cause every word to be manifested in your life. Listen, I want you to do me a favor. Those persons, your friends, family who did not get a chance to tune in tonight, but you don't want them to miss this word. I want you to make sure you share it with them. I'll make sure you call them, text them, tell them to come back and check out this replay tonight. It's going to absolutely change their lives for the better. Don't forget, if you're not connected with me on any of my social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, make sure you do that tonight before you go to bed. Put that on your to-do list tonight. In fact, that's part of your homework after Bible study tonight. Make sure you go on those platforms and subscribe and like and share. Um, also, don't forget to go to my website at henrybolden.com. You can also sign up there for my e-newsletters. You can also uh, go to my store there. I have books, I have materials that I know are going to be a blessing um, to you. And don't forget, um, don't forget you have the opportunity to join me in person on Sunday mornings um, at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. Those of you who live in the city or close to the city, or even those of you who uh, want to travel in just to spend a, a, a Sunday um, with me. Um, you can absolutely do that every Sunday, 9 a.m. We are, we have all protocols are in place. Our environment is safe. We have temperature checks, face masks, or masks are to be worn at all time. And, uh, but you can be a part of our uh, in-person service um, at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time on Sunday. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the house of God. Well, I'm out of time for now, but always in parting, always remember that things can change for you at any moment. I'll see you next time.